nobody can excel in life constantly, correctly to the end of their life without operating under what of the hopeful nervous. Service to God is the advantage for the disadvantage. Our today's topic is actually shared, you know. I mean, I like whoever came up with that acronym. <laughs> However, I'm going to add one thing to it. You know, I saw it's about sleep, hobbies, exercise, and um, devotion. Can share, can share. Okay, I can share that. Okay, what I'm going to add to it is um, it's nutrition. <laughs> I just have to add nutrition to it. Okay, this is the first time I'm presenting on Canva. I have my back back up in case I mess up. <laughs> okay, I think I got it. Um, okay, but I need to be in a presentation mode. Okay, can everybody see my um screen? Okay, so I, I think um I like this design. It talks about eating healthy, exercise, sleeping well. Keep things simple. Think positively. Okay, so this, that's what we'll be talking about. And what I'll do is simple. We'll talk about um, each of these um, practices and then we'll see how it's all tied up and how it affects our life and what we can do to you know, make change. So we know as believers that we are essentially a spirit. We live in a body and we have a soul. And unfortunately for us, we really can't separate these three because it's like three in one. And it shows the three nature, you know, the nature of God too. Mm? So physical health can greatly impact our mental and emotional well-being. And a positive mindset and spiritual practices can also enhance physical health. They are all interwoven. Right. So um, these are just few scriptures, you know, that I will just read to us because I know that we are Christians so that you can pardon me. <laughs> you know, the Bible says, in peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone, Lord. Make me dwell in safety. Hmm? You know, the Bible talks about six days we shall labor, do all our work, but on the seventh day we shall rest, you know, sabbat unto our Lord. You shall not do anything called work. I don't know any one of us, you know, if you're practicing this at all, if you're even thinking about it, right? You know, there's another scripture that talks about in Second Peter that talk about bodily exercise, profit little, right? But godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that we have now, and then life that is that is to come. And what that is simply saying is that godliness has benefit here on earth, and then he has benefit in heaven our exercise is only beneficial here on earth <laughs> as long as we are here on earth we need it because of this physical body that we have by the time we see jesus christ in glory the bible says, when he appears we shall be like him mm -hmm. our corruptible body shall turn to incorruptible body right so there will, there will be an hand to pain weeping you know, sicknesses, all of that will be done away with. And we have a perfect and glorious body. Where, you know, where uh, mortality will swallow immortality. Don't let me mix <laughs> that up, you know. And then devotion. I really, really love this. It says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, day and night. So you can be careful to do everything written in it. And of course, when you do this, your ways will be prosperous and you'll be successful. You know, the amazing thing and what I see in this world of coaching is how unbelievers are leveraging these principles. People, atheists, people that don't even believe in scripture, 
They leverage on these principles. And guess what? They see results. You know why? Seed time and harvest time will never cease. There are some laws that God has established on this earth. The rain will fall on the good and the bad. There will always be sunshine. There will always be day and night. Whether you are evil, whether you're good, right? You know, this light that we have now, some people use it for good, some people use it for evil. Darkness, some people use it for good, some people use it for evil. Whereas God will, it will rain on all of us. It will shine his beautiful sunlight on everyone. Because God has created it, he has made it so. That is why you see a philanthropist giving so much, so many things away, but they keep getting richer because it's a law in motion. You see some home believers, they would do two hours in the morning just practicing devotion, yoga. Ah, believers, we are busy with mundane things and we can't meditate. We don't even know what meditation looks like. And these are phenomenal principles that when we practice them, we will see an amazing result in our life. The only challenge is that, are we patient? Because when you start practicing this principle, there's a seed time and there is an harvest time. You have to recognize seasons. When you start practicing all of these principles, because they are principles, they are godly principles, they are not magic, you won't see the result next day. However, because they are principles, if you put them in motion, if you put them in... Uh, as next week, the picnic. So only what you so It's just a matter of time before you see an amazing result. It's just like you want to create a life. Let's say you want to become a medical doctor, right? And then you look at yourself right now. There are some people that will say, oh, I'm 45 years old. No, I can't go back to school. There are some people that will say, okay, how many years does it take? That means by 52 or 53, I'll be a medical doctor. I want to start the process now. There are some people that will say, ah, oh, my friends will laugh at me that I'm just starting. There are some people that would say, ah, oh, the cost will be too much. I can't afford it. There are some people that would say, is there a loan facility that can help me too? Because I must do it. We are all very different. However, we are a product of our decisions. Seven, eight years would come and time will tell. Time will now reveal the result. The person that took the risk seven years ago will now start and start enjoying the benefits. The person that said, oh, I'm too old, will still be that 52 and them keep, we will still be doing the same thing. You know, you see life now, life rewards our decisions. And, you know, if there's anything you want to get from this presentation today, Quality sleep is a key to good health. And that's why, you know, even on our acronym, sleep is like the first thing. Quality sleep is a key to good health. A man can go without food for up to one month, I think to about 40 days or two months. The longest person somebody ever tried to go on without sleeping, I think it was 11 days. In fact, after about 24, 48 hours, you start hallucinating. That's how crucial sleep is. And see sleep as a glue of your life. It holds everything together. So for I know there are some of us as immigrants, we are in the healthcare industry, healthcare industry, whether you're a doctor, nurse, or healthcare giver, we work 24 hours. Some people are on night shift. Some people, you know, it, it's okay to understand that this is my reality. But what are you doing about it? Are you choosing yourself in the midst of your reality? Right? I have done night work before. And I know what I do. See, what I see with night, night uh, people is they work at night and then they still want to enjoy their day. You can't eat your cake and have it. That is how God has set this motion. You now realize that people work night shift for 10 years. They can't boast of quality of four or five hours of sleep every day. That's dangerous. You're going somewhere dangerous. It's okay. Our body can cope for a short while. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a new mom. <laughs> and I have a toddler of 18 months. I understand when you just give birth to a baby, you can't even get a three or four hours of sleep at a stretch because the baby is just trying to adjust and settle in. It's okay for our body. But guess what? That child is not going to remain a baby forever. 
you realize that after about four to five months, okay, the baby is beginning to do four, five hours. After about one year, if you're lucky, the baby is already doing six, seven hours. Now my baby sleeps all through the night. So my body can, our body can cushion and make provision for those kind of emergencies. Or you're doing a course, right? You know that that course is for three, four years. You know that it will lay a demand on your sleep for a while, right? However, you know that this is not a lifestyle. It will, it's, a, it's a period. And even for that period, you want to see what can I do to still make sure that I maintain my sanity and then I, I still keep it all together. And sleep is a condition, you know, of body and mind that typically recurs for several hours at night. So if you're sleeping now, you're relatively, of course, you are inactive. Your eyes are closed right your muscles are relaxed your your consciousness is practically suspended if there's a lion in front of you if the lion doesn't make noise you won't know you'll be sleeping <laughs> you're not aware guess what is happening um i'm sure if you have been healed before or you've been sick before how you've been um, you realize that it takes energy to breathe it takes energy to do this speaking that i'm doing now until you're sick before you actually know you're like i'm so tired i can't talk <laughs> oh i'm too tired i can't eat when you're sick your appetite is low right you're weak and then you realize that you can't even eat as well you don't even have the energy that's when we know that oh my god so sitting down and listening to this presentation you're using energy you are your body is using energy to concentrate to listen to stare at this screen if you think this is how you look you will not be able to do it so when you are sleeping, what the body now does is to divert all that energy, right, into body repair. So if you're not sleeping, you're not repairing your body. <laughs> it's like you're not recharging your phone. How do you want that phone to function? The phone can be the best of phone, but if you don't charge it, right, if you don't charge the phone, it's not going to function. It will just be looking at you. If you don't update it, even if there are new software, there are new apps, if you don't use it, the phone will be looking at you. The phone has capability to do it, but it won't do it. So according to CDC, they have said if you're between 18 to 60 years, you should sleep at least for seven hours or more every night, not on some nights. CDC says, if you sleep less than seven hours, you are sleep deprived. And when you're sleep deprived, what happens is that weight will compound, low grade inflammation will set in. You will not know that there's a low grade inflammation setting in, in your body, right? But it will be setting in gradually. Maybe you are in your 40s or 30s. You're okay. You're hastening. You're still killing it. You're juggling everywhere. My children, my husband, my mommy, my, my friend. <laughs> you know the way we women, we do? <laughs> and then when you're, when you're getting to your mid-40s and late-40s, you start realizing, ah, I'm not as energetic as before. And then you go to the hospital. They say, ah, your hair one c is, is this. You're like, oh, really? And then they check your blood pressure, like, oh, you're fluctuating. You're like, oh, no, I, will know. I reject it in Jesus' name. <laughs> and then we're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go home now. I'm going to change. And then you go home, you continue what you were doing. And then by the time you are now you're 50, they're like, okay, you, we, you have to start taking these medications. And then you start taking this medication. You ask them, when are you going to stop? They say, no, you continue to take it. And then when you're supposed to be retired, travel the world, play with your grandchildren, you can't. A lot of people are in America today, in their 70s, they're they are okay, they have money, they have houses, they, they, they wish they could go back to Nigeria. When they look at the healthcare system of Nigeria, they're like, no, I can't go. Because they know that they are dependent on the healthcare system. So we are, we are like in a rat race. There's some people now that are in a, they are in a job that is killing them, but that job has health insurance. So they're like, ah, no, I'm not going to leave that job because it will take care of my health. But is that what is that job that is killing your health? And then when you now retire and say you have health insurance, you are kept under the system. You can't be free to do even God's assignment. You can't even do it. 
So sleep deprivation mm, affects everything. Everything. Sleeping well is not laziness. I apologize to pastors, you know. It's okay to do night vigil maybe once a week or once a month. But I realized that some Christians are waking up midnight every day and be joining prayer. It is not good for your health. I'm sorry, you will forgive me. Every day, you are waking up 12 midnight. You are not sleeping. If you want to wake up 12 midnight, and then you have time during the day to still get your seven hours of sleep, maybe no problem. But we have to, you know, we have to balance these things. We have to balance these things. Remember what I said, our body can tolerate occasional things, occasional prayers, occasional intercession. You might even be like, okay, for seven days. I mean, I just finished the 30 days fasting and prayer, just me and my family, right? And we're praying every three, three hours. It's okay. So I'm not against prayer at all. But if I now say that's my lifestyle, then I have a problem. This is season to everything. This is a season you want to wait on God extensively. But it cannot be every day now. Okay, let's leave that table. Okay. <laughs> These are the things that happen when you are sleep deprived, impaired cognition, right? It will affect your brain. It affects your alertness. It affects your decision making. Remember, we are a product of our decision. This, each of these effects are like huge topics on their own. Lack of sleep will disrupt neurotransmitters to the brain that engages, you know, that regulates mood. Symptoms of depression. I've worked in psychiatric hospital before. Most of antipsychotic drugs, right? You see that the person becomes slow and dense. What are they doing? They're trying to make sure that you are, you are constantly in a relaxed state so that they are not hyper. They can't tolerate your hyper. So that lower, uh, lower energy state will keep your, you keep you low. They're trying to put your state, your body in a state of rest, compulsory rest and, you know, quietness. So you see what we're talking about now? Anxiety, anxiety, stress is a killer. Anxiousness, mental health is real. If you think some people are making up stories. <laughs> Nobody is making up stories. Of mental health is a real issue. Real issue. Just do scan of a brain of somebody that has mental health problem and scan of, his, of another person who doesn't have mental health problems. Significantly, you will see the difference in the brain. In fact, if you test the wave activities, you will see the difference. So it's, it's, very, it's like contrast. It's like day and night. Right? So these things are real. But, you know, statistics remains number to us until it affects us. You know, oh, 30% of this, 20%, as long as it's not us, we are fine. However, however, let's open our eyes and let's be proactive. Let's be wise. It increases risk of breast cancer. We are all women. Mm? You know, so melatonin decreases when you're exposed to light. You know, late at night, we are all carrying our devices everywhere right you're supposed to be exposed to light in the day that's how god has made it in motion when you wake up you see the light when it's night and it's dark you don't need light again at night you need that darkness that darkness is a gift it's a gift right stroke when you sleep less than eight hours or less than you know there's a chance the chance of stroke increases by four times just by not sleeping to see the historical. I live to my grandmother, right? Only, once it's night, it's night. Everything is dim. Everything is dim, even in the bedroom. Darkness is a gift. They embrace it. They don't try to force nature. But in our own world, 12 midnight is like 12 noon in the afternoon. We can't eat our cake and have it, right? There's increased risk for diabetes. Lack of sleep increases cortisol, no epinephrine. 
both are associated with insulin resistance. Insulin is what moves up glucose from our blood, right? So when, you, when cortisol is released, when all these stress hormones are released when you don't sleep, well, have you noticed if you don't sleep, even your temperature is raised <laughs> physically, you would know, you become, as a mom, have you done night shift before you come back, you start snapping on your children. I've done that before. <laughs> They're like, no, mommy, mommy's not happy now. I, I've done that before. <laughs> you know, you, even you, you know that you're not yourself. And then after a while, you're like, oh, am I changing? What's going on with me? Because you're tensed, you're stressed. And then weight gain. Sleep helps, you know, sleep helps balance your hormone that make you feel hungry and full. You know, one experiment, uh, you, somebody will have to time me because I'm, I can just be a talker. I'm not even looking at my slide. You see how I'm talking from my head? I've done this thing over and over. Just tell me when I have two or five. You have, you have ten more minutes. Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> so you better summarize that to answer their question. I will try, but I need to kill this. I'm just talking about sleep alone. Oh my god, I still have a lot to talk about. Okay, but I have to talk about on this last point: weight gain. Hmm? Sleep helps balance hormones that make you feel hungry and full. So when you don't sleep well, you will pound up the weight. If you do an experiment for me, weigh yourself at night and then weigh yourself the next morning, you will see a difference of about 1.5 to 2 kg straight just by sleeping. So these are some habits. I will rush through this. These are some habits to improve your sleep, be consistent, go to bed at the same time each night, right? Get up each morning if you can. Try weekends. I still struggle with weekends. So, but if you can't, I know some people are really good at, you know, following rules, but be consistent. Make sure your bedroom is quiet, dark, relaxing, and at a comfortable temperature. Most of us as immigrants in Western world, we don't open our windows at all. No fresh air. And our houses are always warm. I've been to Nigerian houses in this US. It's always warm. It's not good. It's not good for your body. It's not, especially at night. Make your room cold, then go under the duvet. It is protective for the brain. Unlike making your room so warm, everything is warm. No, 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 no. It's not nice at all. It's not good for your body. Okay. Remove electronic devices from your bedroom. TVs, computers, phone. Remove them. I know it's really hard. Remove them. You don't need light exposure at night. Your bedroom is your sanctuary. It's your sanctuary. It's a place where your spirit, soul, and body connect. It's a holy place if you make it like that. And that's a place where you want to be connected to yourself. Remove external influences. This, the influence of the world is too much already. And then you're not bringing it into your bedroom. That's way too much. Way too much, right? Avoid, avoid large meals, caffeine, and alcohol before bedtime. Please avoid them. If you want to take coffee first thing in the morning or latest, maybe by 12 noon, that's enough for the day because coffee has half-life, long half-life. So it doesn't leave your system quickly. When you take it like two, and we process coffee differently as well. So when you take it at two, it's probably still in your body till 10. Even if you sleep, you won't sleep deeply. It will affect your, your, your quality of sleep. Also, get some exercise, be physically active during the day, and that will help you to sleep and fall asleep easily at night. And that takes us to exercise. I mean, fun, hobbies, right? I don't know when last we engage in something we love, something that we can just suspend all the worries and anxiety in this world, even if it's for 30 minutes. This is, this is something beautiful, like this meeting you're on now. It is good because it is positive network. Something is transforming. You are being renewed as you're listening to what I'm talking about now. Information is coming to you. Your mind is agreeing and you're making some decisions about some things you want to change. So this is a positive network. It can be a hobby. It can be part of it because you suspend all your worries and cares and everything. That is if you are here fully. These are some, you see, things like this are no waste of time. Things that transform your body, that helps you to take one step forward, that helps you to become better in life. These are things you should make room for in your life. Don't crowd yourself with so many things and you don't have time for things like this. And then, you know, I just had a baby and I'm like, okay, the way I have laughed in the last one year, 
my older kids, they're like, oh, mommy. Tell us your age when you have the baby. Yeah, too. okay, <laughs> yeah. So I'm 42. <laughs> I'm 42 years old now. And, you know, so I have 13-year-old and 11-year-old. So when I'm playing with my baby, my children are like, mommy, they've forgotten that I was ever playful. Because I've just been serious all their life. That's what they remember. So they're like, oh, can you be this silly? And I'm like, oh, really? Have I not been this happy? They said, no, you don't laugh like this. You don't play like this. Because when I wake up with Emmanuel in the morning, I'm kissing him, like giving him 10 kisses. And then they're looking at me like, mom, I don't know. I said, I did it for you. They're like, I can't remember. Oh, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you see, I have changed over the years with work, busy, taking care of them, cooking. Children, they prefer hide and seek with them than the food you are cooking for them. You change, they don't care. You, you tidy house, clean the this. You know, you're running up and down. They really don't care. You just give them 15 minutes and do hide and seek with them in the house. You see how happy they will be. You'll be the best mom ever. And so for me and my family, we do dance exercise together. 15 minutes, 20 minutes with my husband. We just play song and we dance. That's, you know, just do something. If you don't have luxury of joining a volleyball group, you know, as immigrant, there are some things we don't have luxury for. But the little one that we can do, even within our own home, like waking up in the morning, getting your children together, finding time for devotion. <laughs> It is so critical. Not saying I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. What are you modeling? It's not just enough to go to church. You know, these are things that we need to cultivate. If you don't have time for it, something is wrong. And you have to start working your way back, right? Into things. You have to let go of some things just because of the benefits that will come. But I would say a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the broom. That is so loaded. A dry spirit, I mean, a crushed spirit. That is a depressed mind. Anxiety, worries, and cares of this world. But I say it dries up the bone. In fact, you start questioning yourself. Am I ever good? Can I ever become something good in life? Do people even affirm of me? You know, when you are down, negativity, the enemy will bring the thoughts. And then it will look so big. But a good medicine, you will not even have time for all of that. It's medicine. You are healing and you're getting better by the day. So sisters and brothers, we are wonderfully made. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We have to care for it. Not just our spiritual nourishment, but also our physical nourishment. Because exercise is a powerful tool that can transform our lives in numerous ways. Regular exercise shows that you're grateful to God. It shows gratitude because God has given us this body. It's a gift that we are alive. And when you like something, when you think something is a gift, if somebody gives you a great gift now, what do you do? You show gratitude. Honestly, one way to show gratitude to God for this amazing body, for the gift of life that we have, is exercise. Because exercise is like maintaining and, you know, repairing and maintenance of your body. It's like you have a car, you're maintaining it. If you buy a car of, let's say, I don't know all these expensive cars. I don't ride expensive cars. <laughs> For people that ride expensive cars, I know they take good care of it. The kind of insurance they put on it, you know, where they drive it to. I mean, when they come out of the car, they are full of it. And it's okay. I don't have any problem with that, right? It is a priority to them. They love it. And then they take good care of it. So if your body is a gift, if life is a gift, you are a steward of it, right? Show your commitment to God by nurturing and taking care of your body because you owe it as a service to yourself and to humanity. God has designed you for a unique purpose that only you can implement in this, on this path. So if you don't implement it, you're cheating all of us. But there is something Eve can do that B cannot do. There is something QC can do that Bookie cannot do. And you need an effective and a strong body to be able to do it. You need it. Devotion. Oh, this, my heart breaks when I see Christians join every prayer meeting, go to church every day, except for them having a personal devotion. 
because they are busy. What happened to us? Why are we so externally focused that we are empty on our inside? As a man thinks in his heart, so is that man. Our life must move. It must come from within. It, we must live from inside out. And then when we are full, we flow. When we are full, we flow. And then we don't become empty. And then people don't offend us in church. Why? We are full already. We are flowing. But when you are empty, you take offenses. You, you, you complain. You don't want to join. But ah, pastor will say this. And then you join. Even if you are not here. You know so many things that go on. We don't need that. We don't. We need to be fully present. If you are here now, be present. Fully. Happily, I've told my children I have a meeting. I've locked the door. I'm here fully enjoying myself. And that's how we should live. If you don't feel like it, if you can't do it, communicate. People that can't take your no, they don't know you. And they, it's okay for them. They're on their journey. They will understand as well when it's time to prioritize. In fact, when you prioritize yourself, you will prioritize orders. You will learn to honor commitment. You, when you give your word, you know it's your word. You will even prepare for meetings like this. So you're not just forcing yourself to join. You're even preparing and looking forward to joining. Can you see the difference? That's what happens. And meditation is a spiritual exercise. In fact, I dare to say it's the only place where your spirit, soul, and body meets. You take a verse of scripture. Bible say we say it, we say it, we say it to ourselves as we are saying God's word. Remember, God's word is, is a spirit, they are life. So it, that's the spirit part of it. And then the Bible also, so this word is able to transform our mind. That's our, our soul. So this body, this word is transforming your soul. Mm? It is also giving you spiritual impartation. And guess what it's also doing? It is renewing, it is transforming you. And as a man think in his heart, so is that man. We are a product of our thoughts and our decision. Our life will gravitate towards our most dominant thoughts. So as you're using God's word, as you're spending time, even if it's one verse a day, right? Even if it's one verse a day, you pick it, you gaze on it. All believers are leveraging on this meditation. No wonder the Bible speaks of meditation so much so much you meditate in it when you meditate god's word will transform you change you inside and out you'll be a better woman you'll be a better wife you'll be a better member of god's work you know what spiritual family is not a nice to have if you're a believer you are part you are bound to be part of it you are bound to be part of a spiritual family it is your spiritual family he has benefit both here on earth and in heaven your, your bloodline family will only hang here on her. I hope you know. And as a child of God, you have been born into. So if you are in a church, you should be fully there, fully blazing for God, finding out what your role is, not doing any eye service, doing it like your life really depends on it. If you can't do two departments, if it's only one, be at one and be effective. That if you are not there, they know this person is not there. That is intentionality. And when you, when you start devotion when you start meditation right you will start seeing all of this and these are spiritual practices that helps you and i talk about fasting fasting helps self-control without self-control you can't do anything you can't lose weight you can't heal you can't be a better anything and when you fast you literally put your flesh under subjection and that's why spiritual exercises bible say godliness is profitable for the things here on earth and then the things to come you know, so this is my last slide. So start practicing meditation. Find out more. If you need help on what it means to meditate, there are resources. When a student is ready to learn, a teacher will always appear, right? Exercise, get moving. There's video exercises. There is gym. There is, you know, group work. Just do something. Time in nature. Create time. If your life is so crowded right now and you don't have time, it's okay. All you need to do is to sit down. What can I tick off? Who can I say no to? And they say yes to. It's as simple as that. Sometimes if you don't get rid of some things, new things can't come in. 
Some of us are too shy, are too afraid to say no to some things that are no longer serving us. It's like you want to go to California, you are rolling with someone going to Atlanta, you will end up in a wrong place. That's just, it's just, it's just true. So, you know, and what I want to en encourage you to do today is, I know I've lost weight two times. Remember I said I have another 18 months. So I got all the weight back. <laughs> Because I did CS and I was very sedentary when I was pregnant because I always have to tie my cervix so that the baby can be preserved. So I was always sedentary. So after I had the baby, you know, I got all the weight back and all the emotions came in like, God, can I still lose this weight? I put myself out there, you know, as a chubby <laughs> health coach. And there's some people even making fun of me online. You better go to the gym if you want to lose weight. But then I didn't care. I was exercising, you know, whether it's in pajamas, whether it's in my underwear, whether it's in my um, breastfeeding attire, whatever I wear, I exercise. And I started doing the simple things, the mundane things, the things that we despise, right? But I became, I started doing it, I started doing it. Today, I'm back to my, not just my prenatal weight, I'm back to my original weight, which I wanted, which was 135 pounds. It took me a year. And that's why I know that weight loss can be challenging. It's not easy to do on your own. And that's why I'm a health coach. And I'm, I help people to go on this journey at an affordable price. It, it breaks my heart when a Nigerian diaspora working, earning salary, no matter how little, says I can't afford $50 or $100 for something that would help you in your life. Your health is wealth. Your health is everything, right? In fact, when you're healthy, you'll be more alert for God. Yeah, I put spiritual first, right? God first. But after God is your physical body, then your family. When you are healthy, you can be a better mom. You can do it. You understand? So don't Anything worth it, anything worth it in this world will require your time and it will inqu require your investment, which is, and value is measured in time and money in this, our modern day world. So what are you giving priority to? How does your day look like? Re you write out the things to do in a day. Is your day like work, family, church, outing, party? Is that your top three or four things? Or is your day with devotion where your spirit, soul, and body connect? And then when your devotion is to God, the next thing is your devotion to your family and to the body of Christ. It's very important. You are saved to serve. You are saved to serve. You must be doing something, right? And then the next thing is, of course, we need to work. But you have to balance it. Your work should not override your family, both spiritual and biological. I understand that work is very important. But any work that you are doing that does not allow you to have devotion, that does not allow you to be committed to your biological family and your spiritual family is robbing you of what God has designed you for. However, don't take any rash decision, but plan your life. Don't be a spectator in your own life. I like Dr. Cindy Trim. She always says that. Don't co-create with God. Co-create the life you want. The life I want is in the next five, for me now, in the next six months, I want to build a strong body. So right now, exercise is my number one. Because in six months time, and I have a tracker. I have something that will track it. So I'm putting in the work today for the result I want to see in the next six months. And that's how things are born. That's how things are born. Do you want to lose weight? Okay, I want to lose 20 pounds in the next six months. Okay, do I? can I do it on my own? Do, can I receive help? Okay, who can help me? Can I reach out to the person? What will it cost me? Okay, I want to stay committed to it. And then by six months, you get the result in that area. You move on to the next thing. That's how things are done. So thank you so much. I know I've overshoot my time. <laughs> I'm happy to take any question if you still have time. Thank you so much. That was life-saving. And we appreciate your time. We appreciate your ability to have just 
made us understand everything from beginning to the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, in case you've not sent your questions to Sister Christiana, kindly do so immediately. If you want to ask questions on the chat as well, please drop your questions as soon as possible. We have about 20 minutes to the end of it. Oh. All right, Buki, thank you. Yeah. So uh, my, my own question. I think we have a question in the chat box. Okay, yeah. Okay, I think I'm seeing. Sorry, I was so engrossed. I didn't even look. <laughs> it just came in. So okay. you're fine. But thank you for that wonderful session. I oh, don't know how many, how many things I'm going to start working on, but I think I have something to start with. But the question says, what time is the best time for exercise? What time is the best time for exercise? For a busy mom, mom of three, mom of four, yeah. working and a wife and everything in between, what is the best time? Okay, yes. Yeah. So um, for me, I always say, you see, this life, there's so many things we can't control. So I don't bother my head about what I cannot control. I give all my, I go all in to what I can't control. What I can control is first thing in the morning. I don't want to joke with my devotion to my God. I don't want to joke with my self-care to my body, even before my children wake up, before everybody wake up. And I want to have a healthy breakfast. So there's one, three things that I do. Hmm? On a good day, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I prioritize my devotion. So I had to wake up early. <laughs> As a mom, once your child wakes up, your day has started. You are running around. <laughs> right? So I wake up early. So on a good day, when I want to wake up early, I have to sleep early. Because that's the, the, the problem is that if you're going to have a good day tomorrow, you must start from this night. So I strive. There's so, there's so many things I say no to. But for me, I try to, and even so as a, as a researcher, scientist and everything, a lot of people would always say in the morning. Not necessarily because you can't do exercise in the evening and at night, honestly, but because when you do the difficult things in the morning, morning is like your, your space, your time that you can control, that nobody has a demand on. And you can quickly get the hard things done. So if you're really determined and you want to, right, do it in the morning. And I do my own in the order of priorities. So number one is my devotion. So sometimes, let's say I want to wake up at five and I eventually wake up at six. I'm like, okay, how much time do I have left? <laughs> I divide into three. <laughs> you understand? I divide into three and I'm like, okay, instead of my devotion taking like uh, 45 minutes or one hour, okay, let me just do 15 minutes. And then instead of my exercise doing 30 minutes, I'll do 15 minutes. Then my healthy eating in the morning is a must. I take healthy breakfast. In fact, that was the main reason why I embarked on a 30 days fast because I thought my life would literally end without breakfast. <laughs> but thank God I came out on the other side, right? So, for but then if money does not work for you, exercise can be any time. Just do it. So I know that we are we will have different you know realities going on. Just make you work for yourself. Do you know you can exercise even at work? Five minutes, go to the bathroom. Oh my God. Pick yourself. The, the work will continue. If anything happens to your body, that's your own cup of tea. Sometimes, yeah, when I, I worked in NHS, right? So when I just started that thing, everybody looked at me like a weirdo. So I was working in NHS and pharmacy, very busy units. We're all on our feet, even standing. That's when I realized that even standing in a position is sedentary as well. If you're not moving around, you're just standing. It's active, but it's sedentary because you're not, you don't, before you realize it, your neck and your back is paining you. So I started this weird thing and then I'll stand on my toes, stretch, and then I'll do like this. Then initially all of them, but you know, those are both. They started looking at me like a weirdo. And then after a while, they're like, they'll start reminding me, Bookie, you haven't stretched. I'm like, thank you. And then I'll stretch. Guess what happened after a while? They started joining me. They were all feeling the pain too in their, on their backs. So we all experience the same thing. Don't let me say too much. But you can exercise any time of the day. Look for what suits you. However, it is always nicer 
that you exercise first thing in the morning. And another thing I will say is that John Hopkins have done that research. Harvard has also done that research. The new disease now is called sitting disease. See all of us now, we have been sitting down looking at this Zoom. <laughs> Our body is not fashioned that way. Now imagine having a walk that you get to sit down nine to five. It is dangerous to your health. So still 20 minutes, 30 minutes, especially if you work from home or anything, still it, still it. In fact, it will improve your productivity. They won't sack you. Nothing will happen. 10, 15 minutes during your work day, try to do something. Now the challenge is you want to do it, but you forget or you don't have the willpower, you don't have the motivation. That's why you should join a group. Like right now, this program I'm running, I'm exercising three times a day and I'm going to do it. I've committed to it, right? So if you join that kind of group, somebody is reminding you, somebody is saying, just click on your phone. Even if you are work, go to the bathroom, do this, you know, do your exercise, nothing. It's for your own good. That kind of community will help you to, because it will align with what you want to achieve. Then you can see a result quicker. I hope I answered your question, Christiana. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, you are. Um, we have another question. Okay, go for it. Um, can losing weight be targeted to a specific part of the body? Okay. Can losing weight, I can borrow that question, like me. I don't need to lose weight anyway except my tummy. Okay. So can losing weight be targeted? And is it advisable to diet while breastfeeding? Okay, fantastic. Good question. Thank you, Christiana. So um, there are targeted exercises. However, initially, if you have to lose weight, your body is very efficient. Your body knows where the fats are. <laughs> so take me for instance now, I just lost 40 pounds. And of course, initially, I was losing the weight on my upper body. After a while, I realized that, yes, then you came to my tummy. You know where the thing is? That tummy and the hip and the butt. <laughs> That's where the fat are packed. So the body is efficient at, you know, targeting where the fat is. Now, now that I am on my ideal weight, I still have weight to lose on my tummy. I still have about two inches to lose on my waistline. Now I can start doing targeted exercise. However, the best answer is that your body knows where the fat is and it will go for where the fat is as long as you are exercising and you are eating healthy. However, you can also do targeted exercises just to, you know, firm up a particular size of the body. And because you are slim does not mean you are healthy. In fact, slim people are my, they are my worst clients <laughs> because they think they are healthy because they are slim. In fact, slim people are more unhealthy because they eat all the things sweet they eat everything eatable because they know they will get away with it they won't be fat that doesn't mean you are healthy but let me still work with those that are overweight we are still i'm still begging those that are overweight to sign up and do this program how much more slim people but slim people hmm, because hypertension doesn't respect slim and uh, diabetes doesn't respect slim high cholesterol doesn't respect slim so because you are slim does not mean you are healthy. In fact, you don't want to be slim and frail. People that are slim and frail, they are the ones that even end up the most in care homes because they can't survive any injury. They are very frail. And then as a result of that, there is, there is disability. And once, you are, once you have disability, you can't carry out your own self-function. Then you're dependent on other people to take good care of you. So if you're on this call, it doesn't matter whether... LD lifestyle is our place of default, place of default. We are like, we have well over 300 joints in this body. Can you imagine having a car and not moving that car? So if you're not exercising your body, if you're not eating healthy, you are not honoring God in your body. Bible says glorify God in your bodies. You are honoring God by taking good care of it. I hope I answered your question. Yes, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you, you did. so much. Yeah. Thank Any you. other questions? Somebody asked if okay. the, the um what the best exercise is for the butt uh, for the tummy. Yeah, for the tummy, number one, your number one exercise for the tummy is to reduce your portion control. Don't eat late at night. <laughs> 
don't eat late at night. And then, of course, you can do crunches. Crunches are great for your for your for your stomach, right? You know, things like flexibility, strength training, targeting your upper body, exercises generally, you know, all forms of exercises. By the time you start exercising, you get into it, you realize the one that has the most effect on your stomach. But most of the time, crunches will give you because you're squeezing the abdominal. The abdominal muscle is like a balloon, right? So when you blow a balloon, it might not go back to its original size after a while. And as women, our tummy is expanded maybe three times. And then, but in smooth muscles, it has ability to contract and relax. So with time, if you continue, if you do not give up, the problem is staying power. If you stay long enough and you do these simple daily things, you will see the result. So forget about quick fixes. Quick fixes is not even godly. It's not scriptural. So if you are a Christian eh, and you are going for quick quick fixes, boot camp this, uh, weight loss this, can you flush your tummy? No, you are looking for quick fixes. There's no quick fixes, right? Just obey the simple daily routines, daily things, simple, simple things, simple changes that you can make and be consistent at it. Put yourself in an, in an accountability environment because the most thing is that a lot of, a lot of us are not accountable. We say we want to do something and we break the promise to ourselves every day. And that's not so good. So remember the greatest sin in the Bible is pride. Sometimes it's pride that is delaying us. We can't tell. If you if you don't have pride now, you know what you should do? You should be like, okay, I need help. Talk to a friend that will help you and say, okay, I want to commit to doing this. Can you please ask me like every day? Most of us don't like it. We don't like to be questioned. <laughs> it is flesh. We need to die to our flesh. No, no man after the flesh. That's what the scripture says, right? We live to the spirit, right? So, you know, and the flesh and the spirit, they're always in a the battle. They're always in a battle. But the Bible says, as many that are the children of God, they are the sons of God. As many that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. So you are children of God. Don't allow pride. Don't allow flesh to subdue you. Commit yourself to what is important and give yourself over to you. Remember how Paul, you know, charged Timothy in the Bible. Right, give yourself over to it like a soldier, right? Like a farmer. And there was the third one. There are three things, you know, that I said, like like an athlete, commit Thank yourself you. to it. <laughs> Someone said yoga is tied to spirituality. Okay, what do I think of yoga? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yoga is uh is tied to spirituality. It is true, you know. So a lot of things are real in this world. And as Christians as well, we need to take over. That is why for me, the movements are great for your body because they are flexibility, stretching, pilates movement. However, and that's why we need to start practicing, you know, meditation. I've been to yoga classes before. And what they just say is, you know, someone is speaking in a very low voice. The, square, the room is quiet. They're making you do some slow stretches. And then they're like, okay, can you imagine you're on a beautiful island? And then you have everything that you need, you know, or take your mind back to a vacation that you had that was so good, right? And they start thinking, because you know why? <laughs> you know what they're doing? They're practicing spiritual principles. The Bible says a man thinking his heart, so is that man. That's Bible. So if you think, if you think of godly, remember what Philippians 4 8 told, tells us. Think of, meditate on these things. If there's are, are some things that are true, noble, of good reports, of praiseworthy. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, think on these things. That is what they are doing. They are stealing biblical principles. So what we have to do, I tell people when you want to do um, flexibility movements, you can do our own yoga. It doesn't have to be yoga, you right? Call it whatever you want to call it. Flexibility movement. Pick a verse and say, love is kind. Love is patient. I am born after God. I am, Bukola is kind. Just keep thinking about it. How can I be kind to my husband? Okay, these are the things I do. I think I can be kinder if I start doing it this way. That's meditation. Turning God's word and keep repeating it over ourselves. How can I be kinder to my children, right? Okay, I think I yell too much when they don't do what I ask them to do. What can I replace with that? Okay, I will reward them when they do this and when they don't do this. Or I will think about it for five minutes before I respond because I will be better controlled. That's meditation. That is meditation. I serve in a church or what pastor preached on Sunday. You are exercising, you're listening to the message again. When I'm exercising, it's two in one I'm listening to podcasts or messages. Most messages on church on Sunday, I, I listen to it again. 
I listen to it again. So as I'm exercising, I'm building my spiritual life. I'm building my physical body. My mind is transformed. So good. So, so we need to be doing. There's no how we will give ourselves over to things like this and we will not see progress. Bible say in an increasing measure. You say, add to your faith, hmm? virtue, knowledge, self-control. There is no how you will do these things. Godliness, goodness, mutual affection. He says, when you do these things, you will see incremental. You see, there's no magic with God. Incremental progress. You can say, this is where I am in 2024. I started practicing this thing. This is where I will be in 2025. In fact, you will look at yourself in 2025 and you will say, oh, this was where I was. This is where I am now. Increasing measure. People that knew you five years ago, they will not be able to accommodate you again because they will still be looking at you as though you were that person that you were five years ago, not realizing that you have changed. Mm. So you have to change association. You have leveled up. <laughs> yes, you, you just level up. Can we wrap up the question because of time? Okay, yeah, there's one more question here. Can, okay, um, is it advisable to diet while breastfeeding? Oh, fantastic. Okay, so I started my weight loss journey when my baby was six months. And that is why I don't diet. Everything God has created is beautiful and is good. The Bible, uh, Jesus Christ has set me free. Let no man again put me under bondage. I use scriptures. It's life to me. Everything God created is what? It is good and perfect. God looked at it. God looked at you and said, you're good. Everything God created, as long as it is food. So God created potato. Human mm -hmm. being made yeah. potato fries it's and crisps. And human being likes the taste of crisp and fries. And then we say, we don't like our potato taste. And then each time we want to choose, we choose fries. We don't take potatoes. You see where the problem of human being is now. So potato was never the problem. It was because we despise the natural. We despise the simple. We despise the mundane. And then we go for the sophisticated, the special, the packaged, and then we have a problem. You remember how he started in the garden of Eve? Uh -uh, as God told you, <laughs> you know, it looks beautiful. And then she looked at it. She's like, oh, it's so good. You know the way they package those snacks? You just open it. You say you want to eat half. Oh my God. You would have finished it before you realize. Then you're like, ah, this nut is so good. Next time you're in the store, you buy it again. So really, I don't do diets, right? What I teach people is eating whole foods in a in a in a in a revised, I revise the portions, I revise the combinations. I don't do rice and plantain and beans. Those are killer food, you know. <laughs> We need to change our plates. <laughs> we need to change our plate. We are, we are no longer going to the farm. We are not cultivating. We are not doing hard work. We are doing brain work now, right? So we have to change how we eat. So if you if you join my program, for instance, you will eat real food, whole foods, right? Those are the things I teach. And I'm not a magician. And I don't tell you, you will see the, you will see what you're doing and your progress will be in increasing measure. We'll fulfill scripture. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can drinking water be too much that it doesn't benefit your weight loss goal? I think that's it. And a diet tea medication to lose weight, a healthy choice. I think okay, that's so like water, water is amazing. Water, and a lot of us are dehydrated. So, however, you need to drink water in a in a measured way, so to speak. Most of us remember to drink water in the evening when our body starts telling us that we have not been drinking water. And then we want to sleep, and then we start peeing, and then we don't get good sleep at night. You see how? <laughs> so you should take water. You should start taking water very early. And that's the beautiful thing. If you exercise in the morning, you would have finished one liter of water before you leave home in the morning. Right? By the time you get some exercise again during the afternoon, you would have one good behavior lead to another good behavior. Mm? So water is amazing. Of course, I don't understand how you want to drink too much water because your body, except you're not listening to your body, your body will even tell you, you'll be uncomfortable. But I know that if you drink too much water at night, it can distort your sleep and then you'll be waking up regularly. And then when you don't get good sleep, you are also not healing your body like we have talked about today. So um, the average water intake is always between two liters to three liters. I usually recommend um, three liters because I, I, I allow my clients to eat lots of 
vegetables and fibers and things like that. So when you are on that kind of diet, you need a lot of water. So I always recommend three liters of water in a day. But I say that take your water a lot more during the day than at night. And when you are eating, that period that you're eating, that's not when you should drink a lot of water. So drink a lot of water in between your meals. But when you're eating, you can just sip little water so that your food is better digested. In fact, as, as advised by nutritionists, right? And then which are, which which is the next one? And then, yeah, you can lose weight when you are, while you're breastfeeding. The only thing is that um, you are exercising and then you're not overeating and you're eating healthily because you need nutritious food for your baby as well. And then to new moms, you know, I just want to encourage you. Um, I became a new mom in my 42. I never believed it. But what I can say is I became a better mom because I looked at what I how I parented 10 years back. And I see the stark difference in how I parent now. And I just see that an empowered woman, right, is is is, is a powerful woman. It's a force. You're raising champions. You're raising leaders. And when you get it together, it will flow to your child. My son is 18 months. He's already doing video exercises. So. <laughs> when we finished exercise last night, he was crying. <laughs> he would just be running around. I'm like, this guy is using boats. He run on his toes, on his toes. Because right from baby, I find exercising. So as a new mom, it's the best time, honestly. And you can get your body back. Don't let anybody lie to you because you're a mom. You can't, your tummy can go back in. This dress, I wore it way before and then I can wear it now so new mom is beautiful it's nice it's a nice spirit but you might need to be supported right and it's okay to be, to receive support it's okay to reach out for help it's okay journey of two years can take you three months when you receive help hmm? there's a place in the bible I've forgotten where it is I think it was also Paul talking to Timothy that I, you have many instructors we have forerunners, people that have gone ahead of you, people that have gone the journey that you want to go now. I, I learn from them. Learn from them. Ask them. Think for their program. Think for your webinar. Think for your training. Be a better person. You want to be a better parent. There's a parenting seminar. I, I, pay for it. Oh, you want to be a better wife. You know, pay for it. Pay for it. Go for it. Those are the things. Those I, I call them transformational products. There are some other things that are they are just um, products. I don't. I've forgotten the name I coined for it. There was a video I did a while ago. I said, "What do you spend your money on? Try to do a budget. Are you spending your money on transformational products? Right? This kind of program that I'm trying to push to you now is transformational product. You know why? Because it's going to change you, right? So investing in being a better parent is transformational product. Buying a new bag, a new shoe, a new wig, they are not transformation. They are not transforming nothing, right? You just consume them and use them and look good, that's it. But there's some, any area of your life, any area that you think you require help, look for somebody hmm, who shares the same passion, same thinking, goes in your direction. You have to do due diligence to know who you want to submit to, right? And then, if they have a course, pay for it. If they have a book, buy it because you'll be better. Okay, I I, got, I need to stop now before you guys will close on me. <laughs> okay, thank you so, so much for thank your time. You. I think we have about four more questions on the okay. chat, but I'll encourage you because of our time to just give them brief answers on Good the chat. Answer. Okay. on the chat yeah if it's possible for you to type while we take the announcement from yeah. um sister dk oh okay i think i've talked about yoga yeah uh, diet so team, education the diet team is pending and then the other those thing, things those week. things what dieting most dieties are diuretics you know what is called diuretics diuretics will help water to go out of your body so when you drink them, you pee a lot, you sweat a lot, you get on the scale, your weight comes down, you are excited. <laughs> and then when you finish your diet, give it another few more, few weeks, you're back to your weight. So that is what most of them do. Okay, I've answered that. Um, it's taking water at night good. I already said that it's not good. We're told while growing up, you should not drink water while eating. Yes, yes. What exercise is good at age 40 to 50? At age 40 to 50, if you have not been exercising before and you just want to start, 
you can start with gentle walks, right? But exercise, so what exercise is this? Exercise is constantly pushing your body. Because when you're in middle age, you lose muscle mass. Like I just lost weight now. And I've done my analysis. I've seen that I lost body fat. I also lost some muscle mass. Right? And your muscle mass is like a bank for your future. So I am determined to gain it back. And how do I gain it? By reason of use. You can only gain muscle when you use your muscle, when you stretch it. So do start exercise simple, start oh, yeah. slowly, but make sure it is in an increasing measure. So if you do it for 15 minutes today, maybe next week, take it to 25 minutes. Another week, take it to 30 minutes. And then start looking at, okay, if you don't have more than 30 minutes for exercise, start increasing the intensity. That way you are building yourself up. You realize that. So when I started exercising, I couldn't do more than one or two push-ups. Now I could do 15, you know, press-ups, sorry. You know, when I started, I couldn't do more than 10 seconds plank. Now I can do 150 seconds plank. That is progress, right? You remember what we said? Increasing measure. There is no quick fix anywhere. Delete it from your mind, especially if you're a child of God, right? Quick fixes is killing us in every area of our life. But let's commit to simple, progressive, consistent things and supportive community. Sometimes you can't do all of these things alone. You will start, your willpower will fail you after a while. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a community that will support you and take you to your goal, it's easier for you to achieve. Amen. I hope I answered all the questions. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to round, uh, because round up, Zevin, I'm sorry, but I needed you to just in, in like four minutes, please, before we round up, tell us about your coaching program and how we can join for those that want to join, because I know you have one coming up in August. Yeah. And then finally, many of us, like we, we, those exercises are good, but some of us, like the way we talk in our last class, we love to like just do the walking. So what is your take on the walking? Well, is that an helpful way to start on exercise? Four minutes, Bukola, because of time. <laughs> okay. All right, your, so um, I'll start for, okay. Details for them. I'll give them your details for if they want to join. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right. So let me start with the uh, walking. Walking is fantastic. In fact, it is what is recommended the most by World Health Organization, CDC. That's the average. It's like basic it's like basic education. The way they recommend uh, primary and secondary education so that they can solve lit literacy problem, right? <laughs> like the basic universal kind of thing. But you and I know that to make a headway, right in the world you need to go to college that's why you start taking loan when you want to go to college government will not do that again because you have attained the basic minimum so basic minimum is working we should not even be debating working because it should be part of our life that's basic now if you now want to build a strong body body that will serve you to your whole day and now you need to incorporate several kinds of movement we don't wash our clothes again we don't wash dishes again. There's so many things we used to do back then that we don't do again, right? There's so mm. many house chores that we use our hands for that we don't. That's why arthritis is going, is really increasing because we're not using range of motions with the things we are doing now. Mm. So you need exercises that will increase mm. different range of motion. If you have mm. gone to the farm before and walked for two hours, you will know it's not beans. <laughs> you will bend down, you know, and cultivate and till the ground. We don't do all of that again. Some of us cannot even bend down for five minutes. <laughs> but we need that exercise. We need it because we need to use all those joints so that we can enjoy our body. And the second one, of course, is about my. So what I do in my program, the one I try to push to a lot of people and a lot of us that I think will suit this kind of community is the group one that I do. Right. So. I give you meal plans every week. I upload it for you. I give you the shopping list of the ones you should buy, the brands you should buy. And then I go a step further and do a cooking video of how you will make that food. I've done the work. I've, I've, I'll give you the amount of calories, the amount of milligrams that you're going to weigh, that you're going to measure. And it's per week. And I'll also teach you a way that you can meal prep on Saturdays. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday, every day, you're just warming your food. You're not staying in the kitchen for more than 15 minutes. And see me, Grant, I know we have to work. We have children. Life is busy. It's on a fast pace. We have to be committed in church as well. 
So all of these things are busy. We can't, we can't say we want to live like a queen in America. We, uh, how many of us can afford ourselves? And then you now hear people saying, I cannot eat warm food. I'm like, what's going on with you? You want to eat fresh food every day? You're living in America. What's your salary? You know, that kind of thing. So you need to think about what works, what will work for you. And at the end of the day, when we don't cook, when we don't, uh, when we say we want to eat fresh, what you end up doing is driving to Starbucks, driving to McDonald's, driving, and then we are eating food that's killing us. We can't kill ourselves. So that's what I do. And then I do life exercise three times a day. You can log in from your phone, from wherever. Even if you don't have gym equipment, you can do it. And then I check in on you. So if you're not ready to make a change, don't bother about coming to me. I've upgraded myself now. I only work with those who want to see results. And, and I mean it, right? Okay, so after about two weeks, if you don't engage, I, I disengage you, right? Because I need, I'm need i a coach. I need results. Have you seen coaches that take a uh, football team to, to matches? When they don't win, what happens to them? They fire them. So when I don't help you to achieve results, you can fire me too. And me too, I can fire you. you know? <laughs> because we are about <laughs> discipline and results. Some of us, we like it too easy and then we are not making change. We are like, we remain where we are. No, I've elevated. I've seen that it's not helping people. But when we need to push each other onto good works, we have been, we have got masterpiece, a masterpiece ready with the word of truth, shining light in every area of our life. That's the light Christ has called us to. He has not called us to a sedentary, you know, sick, weak life. How do we fulfill God's assignment if we are weak? How? It's not possible. How do we glorify God with sick body? It's not, it's not possible. You understand? So that's what I have to do. And it's just a hundred dollar per month, right? I recommend that you do for six months. But if after two months you think you're fine, you don't want to do it again, yeah, you just give me notice and you can come off it. But what I really want to do is I want to engage with people that want to achieve results. So, you know, if you want to lose, let's say 30, most of us as Africans, we have a lot of weight to lose, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, you know, that's kind of weight we need to lose. And if you don't have weight to lose, it's not because you are healthy. It's, you know, you are just lucky by nature. So, you know, that's what I do. And, um, if you like it, you just join. Uh, I take uh -huh. new intake every month. Is someone talking to me? I think that's what I have. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. you. Um, Pastor Mrs. will give us her information for all of us that are interested. Please yeah. join. Father Lord, we thank you for today. We worship your name. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to even to come together as a family. We thank you, Lord, for good health. Thank you, Lord, for peace in our homes. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your joy. Father, we worship and glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we now pray that everything that we have learned even on this platform, Father, you give all the zeal, the determination, the rest of mind, the peace to be able to be committed even in this program in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, Father, for your word to be established in our heart and for all to be able to take care of our body, our spirit, and our soul all together so that our, your, your name shall be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit Sister Book into thy care. We pray, oh God, that you continue to strengthen her, that she will not faint or fall. And as the Lord is using her, she'll be able to make a difference in every homes and every lives in the mighty name of Jesus. 